This Equipment World video is brought to you by Chevron Dello 600 ADF Ultra Low Ash Diesel Engine Oil. It's time to kick some ash. Hey everyone, welcome back to Equipment World. I'm Brian, your host. You're watching The Dirt, the video podcast that's geared towards bringing you interviews and discussions based around new construction equipment and just general happenings in the skilled trades. So today we're going to take a little bit of a departure from the traditional dirt episode. And I truly do want to go down the road of starting a discussion. Uh, I really want your feedback in the comments of this video. Today we're going to be talking about what does it mean to have a healthy workplace culture in the construction industry? Because I think a lot of companies don't really think about that the way our white collar world counterparts do. And so what do I mean by a healthy workplace culture? Uh, I'm not talking about hitting deadlines and I'm not talking about getting bonuses on big jobs. I'm not talking about any of that stuff. I'm really talking about how do your employees feel about your company? If I were to come over and take a pulse of all the people on your job site, would they be overwhelmingly positive about your company or would they just kind of say they're there because they don't have anywhere else to be? So as you guys are all aware, the industry is really hurting for people right now, which for an employer means that you are now having to actively market for good employees. And that means your company's culture can have a tremendous impact on what kind of employees you have and your employee retention rate. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about some ways that you can create a good workplace environment that's not only going to attract good, solid operators, but it's also going to hold on to those operators because you make it a place where they want to stay. So before we get into the ways you can do this, there's one concept I want everyone to be aware of. These are all top-down policies. These are things that you can implement as the owner of your company, as the upper management in your company that will trickle down to the frontline employees on the job. When you establish a healthy culture in your organization, that is going to trickle down to your superintendents, it's gonna trickle down to your foreman, and therefore it's going to eventually trickle down to your frontline employees. The way you communicate to your subordinates is going to be the way they ultimately communicate with their subordinates. And when you change the tone in your company, that will absolutely change the tone on the job site for that guy that's sitting in a dozer sitting in an excavator but before we get into that I want to take a second to tell you about the sponsor of this video Chevron lubricants protecting your diesel engine and its exhaust after treatment system has traditionally been seen as an either-or proposition when it comes to choosing the engine oil that's going to protect your system and that's exactly why Chevron spent more than a decade of R&D work developing a no compromise formulation now I don't have to tell you why a clogged DPF is bad news but but here's the real kick in the pants. 90% of that ash clogging up your DPF and then upping your fuel and maintenance cost, it comes from your engine oil. You might be thinking, why don't they make an engine oil with less ash in it then? You'll be happy to learn that Chevron agrees with you. They've developed a new ultra low ash diesel engine oil that is specifically designed to combat DPF ash clogging. Dello 600 ADF with Omnimax technology cuts sulfate ash by 60%, radically reducing the rate of DPF clogging and extending the DPF service life by two and a half times. Before you had to choose between protecting your engine or your after treatment system. Now you don't. Dello 600 ADF with Omnimax technology. It's time to kick some ash. So what are some of the ways that we can actually change the tone in our company? Well, one of the biggest ways in this industry that we can do that is by setting clear expectations and having clear communication. I cannot tell you the number of times I was on a job site and I was told, go push this pile of dirt. I had no idea why I was pushing that pile of dirt. And so I would start pushing a pile of dirt in the way I thought was best only to get yelled at by the foreman because unbeknownst to me, I was doing it in a way that was going to interfere with the next step. Had he just effectively communicated, I need you to push this pile of dirt because I would have had a bigger understanding and a better understanding of the full picture of what needed to happen. And then I would have been able to use that information to complete the job in a way that would have not only saved time, but it would have stopped me from getting yelled at. Effectively, that would have boosted my morale significantly because who likes spending the day getting yelled at? Unfortunately, as we all know, that's part of the culture of our industry and it's one that I personally feel really needs to change because it's not an effective way of communicating. And when we can set a clear tone at the top that we're going to effectively communicate the entire picture of what needs to happen and then 
let that trickle down to the guys on the front line, everyone's going to have the big picture view, everyone's gonna operate more efficiently, and overall everyone's gonna be happier because they're no longer guessing and taking stabs in the dark at what the next step is. Another great way to change the culture in your company is to really take stock and think of, do you create an inclusive environment? And what do I mean by that? Does upper management really take the time out to communicate with your frontline employees? That was one of the big complaints from almost everyone that I was out on the job with is, Upper management never came out to the job site, and if someone from upper management or the owner himself came out to the job site, very rarely did they get out of their vehicle to talk to the frontline employees. You've created this exclusion zone to where you now have upper management ownership and you have your employees. And there's a very clear boundary and there's a very clear line. It may not be what you intended, but it's there, and your frontline employees pick up on that. Again, going back to overall morale, if your frontline employees don't feel valued, they don't feel included, you're not going to have good production out of those employees. They are there at the end of the day to collect a paycheck and they don't care anything beyond that because you haven't given them any reason to care beyond that. So learning to include everyone, make it a team effort. It's not just the peons working for upper management. It's everyone working together for a common goal is going to get your employees more invested in your projects. It's going to give them a personal drive to get the project done efficiently and quickly as opposed to just doing what's required for their paycheck at the end of the day. The next suggestion I have for really improving your workplace and helping the morale overall in your company is giving positive feedback. Again, in this industry, it is so uncommon to get positive feedback. I've talked about it multiple times on my personal channel that one of the ways that you know you're doing a good job that day is if you don't get yelled at. Unfortunately, that's just an aspect of this industry that has been really, really hard to shake. And this starts again at the top with you in upper management or as the owner of your company. If you make a point to give positive feedback to your employees, let them know you guys are doing a great job. Hey, I'm really glad you guys are ahead on this project. Keep it up. This is awesome. It doesn't take anything magical or special. It just takes a quick pat on the back. And that can take an employee who is fed up, who is done, who just is working for the paycheck, and it can start to bring them back into your organization and feel like a member of the team. And that's where you're going to start seeing increases in your retention rate with your operators. And we all know it is far more expensive to bring someone into the company, retrain them, process through all of that intake paperwork than it is to just hold on to an existing employee. Another great way to change the culture of the company is to show your employees they're valued. And how do we do this? Well, this is where I might ruffle some feathers, but one of the things that we always knew, everyone on Heavy Civil Projects knows, is there are big fat bonuses if the company meets deadlines and finishes ahead of the project timeline. Now, I haven't worked at a single company where any of those bonuses have translated down and trickled down to me as an operator. And at the end of the day, yes, upper management has done all of the planning and staging. Your supervisors and your foremans are on the site and they're managing all of this production. Absolutely, they should share in the overall completion of that project. But at the end of the day, it's the operators running the machines that really determine how quickly and how efficiently you're gonna get that project done. And for those employees to not ever see any of the benefit, I can tell you right now, I never felt valued at one of the larger companies I worked for because I never got to see any of that reward. I got to get yelled at when I wasn't working hard enough or fast enough, but I never got to see the carrot on the back end of the job being completed. That's a tremendous way. If you really want to invest in your employees and invest in your company, that is a phenomenal way to bring those employees on board and make them feel like one of a team as a collective, you guys are working towards this project completion. And as a collective, you will all share in the rewards of that. And I'm not saying that, you know, supervisors and superintendents should, should get the same bonus that your dozer operator should, not by any means, but to just have some appreciation shown to the operator that's sitting in the seat that has given up his home life so that he can come out there and run the machine, that goes a long way in roping that employee back into the company and really making him feel valued and making him want to strive to do better. 
So like I said, I want this to be a discussion. This is not me just sharing my ideas with the world and, and you guys can just take them. It, I honestly want this to be a discussion in the comments where, you know, feel free to share what you're doing in your company and some of the things that have been effective at changing just the overall culture of your company. Feel free to share things that you've done that have maybe had a negative impact that you thought would have a positive impact. I really want this space here in the comments of these videos to be a discussion board where business owners can come together and start to have a discussion about changing the culture overall in this industry. Because let's be honest, this industry is in need of a culture overhaul. It has been for a long time. So I appreciate you guys following along with this one. I know we didn't do anything fancy with interviews or anything like that, but like I say in my introduction, part of what you get is discussion. And I want this to be a discussion. So that being said, thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next episode of The Dirt.